Hello and good morning, Frank. How are you doing today? Good morning. It's Frank Figluzzi here. You have done something here that it's like you're taking the mystery out of what life is like out there on that long haul. Because so many of us, you know, we've seen the TV shows, we've watched the movies, but this right here is in a book that we can take our time reading. Well, thank you. I, it's something I felt compelled to write when I finally, after 25 years as an FBI agent, retired as assistant director, I finally learned more details about the FBI's Highway Serial Killings Initiative, mostly that it was still happening. Yes. And here's, here's what prompted me to get on the road, put my investigator hat back on, and ride 2,000 miles in a big rig. Here's the numbers. 850 murders known by the FBI to have been committed against women, mostly sex trafficked women, but not all, alongside our nation's highways. And the FBI is confident this is the work of multiple long haul trucker serial killers. The numbers get worse. There's 200 of those 850 cases that are considered unsolved active investigations. And the FBI is working 450 suspects right now. Wow. Wow. I, I'll tell you, I, I keep waiting for the list to come out of, of a lot of these because my father was a truck driver. I, I know that he he's going to be on that list. I just I just have it in my heart that he was not oh, that no. nice guy out there. Oh, no, Arrow. I, I, oh, my goodness. I, I have to tell you something. I have uh, dedicated in part this book to the stalwart American trucker because I can't emphasize enough that I came away impressed with modern day truckers and wow. trucking and it's the impact on our community, on our, you know, our economy. They're bringing food to our table. They're putting food on their own family's table. But there is a dark side to trucking. And I'm telling you, the numbers are not good in terms of medical and mental health. Yeah. Um, for example, 44 percent of long haul truckers, when surveyed anonymously, exhibit symptoms of major clinical depression. 20 percent binge drink five or more drinks of alcohol at a time mm -hmm. and 10 percent say they drink alcohol every single day wow see that's not even hitting the, the ephedrine line because my brother was always on ephedrine because he knew he had to get to that next town well there's drug use there's long periods of drug use in the 70s and 80s mostly in, in involving amphetamines to stay awake that's even him. even methamphetamine being involved and then if you're awake like that you got to come down, yeah. right? And and coming down is either alcohol or another drug. So you've got this volatile mix. You're self medicating, um, not good. Not good if you're driving eighty thousand pounds of steel across the nation's highway. Did you have to become a trucker in order to do this story? Because how do you get on the inside of this this universe all its own? Well, thankfully, um, I found a trucker who was willing to tolerate me in the cab, <laughs> sleeping in that sleeping in that upper berth of the bunk bed in the sleeper berth. And lucky for me, this driver was a graduate of the Culinary Institute of America. He had worked as a chef and he chose he chose trucking for more money. So that meant we sometimes cooked really good meals inside the truck. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the way that you bring your paragraphs to life, it, it's almost like you knew that we were going to be sitting with you one day. I mean, it took 25 years to get going, but but the thing is, though, now it, it, it really belongs to us, and we get to take that walk with you. Well, thank you. I, you know, my first book, The FBI Way, was a national bestseller three years ago, to my amazement. And this one's doing very well. I want you to feel like you're in that truck I with me. I want, I want you to feel like... You're sitting with me when I interview the trafficking victims who survived violent encounters with truckers and now are thriving, the very few that get out alive. I want you to feel like you're alongside me when I interview the top crime analysts in the country who are connecting the dots to stop the killing. I, I hope that's what it's like. And I hope it makes people more vigilant and safer on the road as well. I got to ask you a personal question, Frank, because there's been a lot of talk of this lately. What about the missing indigenous women? D did you see any of that evidence out there on that highway? Yeah, this is a problem not talked about enough, and I'm glad you brought it up. I do hit it in my book. There's, um, there's a victim I feature from Oklahoma named Casey Joe Pipestem, a teenager who was trafficked to truckers. 
She's from the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma, and she was found dead in mm -hmm. Grapevine, Texas. Um, that case, by the way, still unsolved, still unsolved years later. Um, yeah, it's a problem in Arizona. It's a problem anywhere we have large reservations. We've got jurisdictional issues, tribal police, FBI, um, drug use involved. It's, it's horrific, and this is kind of a silent problem that's there, and some of us kind of want to look the other way, but we need to take a look at what's happening at our indigenous tribes. Mm -hmm. I love the way that your department really does go into the investigations because the one thing that I've always learned, and I, I don't know what my attraction is to something just like a long haul, but what happens is, is the investigating means the body could be found in this part of the country, but there's usually a pattern with a serial killer and you're able to go in and see that it, there's a circle, it goes to different cities, but there's definitely a pattern there with those serial killers. This is how the crime analysts do their work and how their database works as well. You've got this mobile crime scene with an 18-wheeler exploiting the seams in law enforcement jurisdictions miles away before states away, before anyone knows anything about what happened. But the magic of technology and the FBI crime analysts is that they can spot the same victimology. I get into what that means yep, in the book. Yep. Why are you so why are you selecting these victims? Is it the red hair? Is it the slight build? What is it about that victim? And more equally, or if not more important, what's the crime scene look like? This is what the FBI asked the police departments to enter into the database. Where was the victim found? In water, under a tree? Was she naked, half naked? Yep. Which half is naked? Was she mutilated? By what? By a knife? Was she gagged, stabbed, or shot? Was she duct taped, duct taped before or after death, mutilated before or after death? All of these questions get entered into the database, which helps connect the dots and say sometimes we saw this three years ago across the country. You two departments, you need to talk. You've got the same killer. Wow. Wow. Let me ask you a personal question. I, I did an interview with a school that, that is, was investigating the, the trucker's uh, serial killing. Are you the Frank that they're talking about in that podcast? Gosh, I don't know. I, I'm not aware of that. Well, I'm not aware. Because, I mean, they, they talked with, with an investigator as well. And the way you just explained that story, I'm going, I've heard this story already. And it came from that from that from from those students. They, they needed a year of the uh, end of the year project. And so they chose to investigate murders on the highway with truckers. Well, I, I wasn't interviewed by them, but I will tell you this. I'm aware of that work, and I believe what you're talking about, although there are multiple criminal justice groups out there trying to solve some of these. That The group I'm thinking of was working on the redhead that's it, murder. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Yep. yeah the, I, and I, I feature the redhead murders in my book, and here's where I might disagree with this group, because what they're saying is it's solved, and it was the, the killer was a, a guy named uh, Jerry Johns, and here's the deal. Jerry Johns did kill some of the redhead victims, but not all. And I I believe I consider the redhead series of murders to be unsolved. Wow. Wow. You've got to come back to this show anytime in the future, dude. Oh, I'd be happy to do it and uh, talk more about some of the, the hidden parts of our society. Absolutely. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. Take care.